I've uncovered shocking evidence about the Wagner Group's secret mission to track down Joseph Kony in 224. Today we've got some shocking news to discuss. It seems that Joseph Kony, the infamous leader of the Lord's Resistance Army, has resurfaced in 2024, causing global concern and leading to a renewed hunt by the Wagner Group. This is a story you won't want to miss. What you are about to hear might seem like it's straight out of a Hollywood script. Russian military forces in the thick African savanna, aiming to take down a psychopathic African warlord. It sounds like the perfect plot for an action thriller, but as we well know, sometimes reality surpasses fiction. Before diving into this story it's essential to clarify who Joseph Kony is, what the Lord's Resistance Army LRA, is, and who the Wagner Group, specifically Africa Corps, is. Let's start with Joseph Kony and the LRA. Joseph Kony is a Ugandan rebel leader and warlord, founder of the armed group known as the Lord's Resistance Army LRA, which has operated in Uganda and neighboring regions such as the Central African Republic since 1987. But it's also crucial to understand what a warlord is. A warlord is a military leader who controls a significant area within a country without legal authority, using force to maintain groups of loyal fighters who are not aligned with the central government, often engaging in illicit activities to finance their operations or selling resources from the territory they control. Joseph Kony rose to power as the rebel leader of the Acholi people, the predominant ethnic group in northern Uganda. Initially tied to local spiritual movements, Joseph Kony later proclaimed himself a spokesman and prophet of God, claiming that his mission was to establish a government based on the Ten Commandments. Under his leadership, the LRA became notorious for its extreme brutality, especially for abducting children to turn them into soldiers or slaves. This was aimed at reinforcing their ranks and terrorizing the population to deter support for other factions or the Ugandan government. Ugandan President Yoweri Museveni launched unsuccessful efforts to destroy the LRA, triggering a conflict that extended to neighboring countries like South Sudan, the Democratic Republic of the Congo, and the Central African Republic. In this prolonged conflict where various armed factions committed atrocities against the civilian population with little containment or respect for international law, the LRA stood out as the most brutal of all. The LRA's attacks were violent and arbitrary, targeting remote villages and defenseless populations. I must emphasize that tens of thousands of children across Central Africa were abused and brainwashed, turned into child soldiers in a whirlwind of terror that lasted for decades. Not hundreds, but tens of thousands of children. There are brutal stories of them being forced to eat human flesh after an attack on a village in 2005. The International Criminal Court issued an arrest warrant for Joseph Kony for 70 counts of war crimes and crimes against humanity. Despite international efforts and a massive media campaign in 2012, known as Kony 2012, which aimed to raise public awareness of his crimes and capture him, Joseph Kony has managed to evade capture. It is believed that he has moved between several countries, including South Sudan, the Democratic Republic of the Congo, and the Central African Republic. In 2008, the U.S. Department of State designated Joseph Kony as a specially designated global terrorist and provided operational support and intelligence to Uganda for his capture. After the failure of these efforts, U.S. Army Special Forces became directly involved by order of then-President Barack Obama in 2011, launching Operation Observant Compass with the clear objective of killing or capturing Joseph Kony. The operation spanned five Central African countries and had an estimated cost of $80 million. Later, former President Donald Trump ended Operation Observant Compass after taking office in 2017, and Uganda also ended its efforts against the LRA, arguing that the group and its offshoots had permanently fled across borders and would not return, which was not entirely true. It was not until 2022 that the United States established a $5 million reward for information leading to Kony's capture, but even so, Joseph Kony remains at large, and his exact location remains unknown. That's why I mentioned that this African psychopath is somewhat like the Bin Laden or El Mayo Zambada of Africa. With this context it's time to mention the Wagner Group. Those who follow Time Voyager are probably already familiar, but it never hurts to do a brief review. The Wagner Group is a Russian private military company PMC, known for its involvement in various conflicts around the world. If you want to compare it to something, you could say it's the Russian Blackwater, but clearly with several differences. This PMC has a close relationship with the Russian government and acts as an unofficial arm of Russian foreign policy, especially in regions where the Kremlin prefers to maintain a certain official distance. 
Since its founding in 2014, the Wagner Group has been a key player in the Donbas war in Ukraine, supporting pro-Russian separatists and participating in decisive battles in Donetsk and Luhansk. Its influence has extended beyond reaching Syria, where they have supported Bashar al-Assad's regime against various rebel groups and ISIS forces, thus consolidating the Russian presence in the region. Additionally, they played a crucial role in the capture of the city of Bakhmut during the Russian invasion of Ukraine in February 2022, marking one of the fiercest battles of the conflict. In 2023, former Wagner leader Yevgeny Prigozhin led an insurrection and uprising against the Russian government, motivated by the lack of support for his forces on the Ukrainian front. This movement, which advanced violently towards Moscow, was an unexpected and dramatic twist. However, months later, its leader Yevgeny Prigozhin, as well as Dmitry Utkin, his right-hand man, died under strange circumstances when their plane was shot down within Russian territory. Many speculate that Vladimir Putin may have ordered their demise, but it is uncertain. Nevertheless, months later the Wagner Group reorganized under the command of Anton Yizarov, alias Lotus, integrating some of its factions into the Ruskvardia, or the Russian National Guard, while others train troops in Belarus, and a significant faction known as Africa Corps, operates in several African countries. In Africa the Wagner Group has significantly expanded its reach and activities, involving itself in countries such as Libya, the Central African Republic, Mali, Niger, Burkina Faso, and Sudan. Many of these countries have experienced coups in recent years. In these locations the Wagner Group has not only participated in combat but has also assisted in military training, security for heads of state, and protection of valuable mineral and oil resources. This expansion has served to project Russian influence in Africa, gaining access to natural resources and increasing its geopolitical weight against other Western and regional powers. Now with this quite extensive context let's move on to the main story, the hunt for Joseph Kony. Multiple independent sources describe to Rolling Stone a bloody near capture of Kony by Russian military contractors working for the Wagner Group in a remote corner of the Central African Republic in early April 2024. Rolling Stone contacted a rebel group whose members witnessed parts of this operation on April 7, 2024, near a village in eastern Central African Republic called Yemen. The same name as the country, but this is a small Central African village. As the UPC, Union for Peace in Central Africa rebel group moved inland, a rebel commander named Usmain relayed the fighters' accounts on the ground in a series of voice messages. At least four people died including two civilians and two soldiers reported Usmain, a field commander of the UPC who requested not to be identified for security reasons. Local sources reported that a Russian military helicopter landed on April 7 at 5 a.m. local time. Central African Republic President Faustin Arshange Twadera and Wagner General Anton Yazarov, alias Lotus, personally supervised the raid. Hours after their landing a local informant led the troops to Kony's compound, where LRA forces were entrenched. Initially the Wagner group encountered fierce resistance, but the final tally was several dead and wounded among both LRA members and Wagner forces. However, the raid failed to capture Kony, who managed to escape once again, although some reports suggest he was injured during the confrontation. According to Usmane, LRA fighters and Russian Wagner Group forces clashed in a skirmish that left at least four people dead, including two civilians in the area. The conflict left several wounded and an undetermined number of casualties, but Joseph Kony once again evaded capture. Usmane did not provide further details about the nature of the operation or the status of LRA forces after the confrontation. Additionally, it is possible that Wagner forces will continue in the region in search of Kony, using information obtained during this failed operation to plan future capture attempts. The use of private military contractors, especially in a context as complex and politically charged as the hunt for an African warlord, raises several ethical and legal questions. However, the persistent pursuit of Joseph Kony, a figure who has evaded capture for over a decade, demonstrates the ongoing relevance and urgency of this conflict in the heart of Africa. The failure of the operation does not diminish the need for justice for the victims of the heinous crimes committed by the LRA under Kony's leadership. To put it into perspective, this operation is not merely an isolated attempt to capture a war criminal. It is part of a broader effort to bring stability and security to a region plagued by years of violence and conflict. The participation of the Wagner Group, with its reputation and capabilities, adds a layer of complexity and controversy to the situation. 
It is unclear what the next step will be in the pursuit of Joseph Kony, but it is evident that his capture remains a priority for many nations and institutions involved in the region. This was another episode of Time Voyager. If you enjoyed it don't forget to leave your like and share this content with other enthusiasts of history and international conflicts. See you in the next episode.